And uh, yes, so this is a real case, unfortunately for him. It's a Christian, he's 50 years old. He has no past history, but in his family, his father died from prostate cancer at the age of 80. He asked his GP since three years to do a PSA, and GP said, no, it's not in the guideline. You're 50, uh, your, patient, uh, your father died from prostate cancer at the age of 80. It's not a family uh, uh, risk of uh, having a prostate cancer, so no PSA. And finally, at the age of 50, he go back to his GP, asked for PSA, and he has his PSA that was at 19. DRE, it was a T3 lesion. He had biopsy, and we found a Gleason 8 on five out of the 12 biopsies. So just tell me, how can I switch the slide? You do it or I do it? I do it with a, yes, with the right button. Yes, okay. So which exam are you going to ask for this patient? Are you going to ask for CT scan, bone scan, PET line or PET PSMA, CT scan and bone scan or everything? Who want to answer? One answer. Five, all? <laughs> Three? Three, it's a pet PSMA, okay? Yes, you, you have a large access of PSMA in your country? Yes, okay. Because in France, uh, since June 1st, 2022, we were able to use PSMA for recurrence of PSA after local treatment. And we are not allowed to use pet PSMA for the for diagnosis, okay? So I totally agree with you. That the best option is to go for PET PSMA in this situation. Uh, and this is what he had. Um, we know that this PET PSMA is much more efficient in terms of sensitivity and specificity compared to uh, uh, um, CT scan or bone scan, and of course, better than PET coline. Uh, because he was in France, he had a CT scan and bone scan, it was negative. So what is the definition of the locally advanced prostate cancer? T3? Vision 8? Okay. Iris prostate cancer. If I have a lymph node on the, in the pelvis, on the CT scan, can we consider it a locally advanced prostate cancer or is it a metastatic prostate cancer? Unfortunately, no. It's considered if you have one or two lymph nodes in the pelvis on your, your CT scan, it's considered again, and it's, it's continued to be a locally advanced prostate cancer. And for this is very important in terms of definition because for the treatment, it's going to be a little different. So uh, you know that what we call locally advanced prostate cancer, it's patient with a T3 lesion. Gleason 8, 9, 10, or PSA greater than 20. And you have a very high risk prostate cancer that is a clinical T3B and uh, T or T4 and any N1 in the pelvis. So this is uh, what we are going to discuss today. Of course, we know that this kind of cancer is definitely the kind of cancer that will kill the patient if you don't do anything. And you will have to discuss with him and to discuss in the tumor board what kind of treatment you are going to give him because we know that we can use surgery, we can use radiation therapy, we can use hormonal therapy, uh, and uh, in which order, in which situation, this is what we are going to discuss. So this patient is young. He has a PSA of 19, he's an eight, negative CT scan and board scan. What is your first line treatment? It's a small T3. Surgery first. Okay, everybody agree about surgery first? Yes. Is there any option to give him hormone therapy before surgery to have a regression of the tumor and to have a nicer dissection of the surgery, nicer dissection of the prostate? No, it's in discussion. Okay, for the moment, new adjuvant hormonal therapy, it's not a low, it's not a low. We don't have to do it, it's in the, the, the guidelines, but we'll see that there is some new strategy and clinical try about this, these possibilities. So if you look at the, the guidelines again for this patient, definitely he, can have, he cannot have uh, active surveillance or watchful waiting. He has to go for surgery or radiation therapy. 
surgery. Uh, there is a lot of publication concerning the, this uh, locally advanced prostate cancer surgery. Most In most of the cases, it's a retrospective and monocentric studies. There is no prospective randomized trial comparing surgery and radiation therapy. But because you read the, the, the newspaper of urology, you, you know that in the north of Europe, there is one ongoing trial looking at this issue to, to and you can clear prospective on the looking at either going for surgery or for radiation therapy. Uh, it's, uh, there is two important things to know when we go for surgery for this kind of patient. First, the good news that it's still between uh, 15 and 27 percent, 30 percent of the patient who still have a PT2 disease, so with a good prognosis. Second point, there is a lot of positive margins. So for this patient, really, we don't really have to discuss the, the neurovascular preservation, and usually we don't have to go for neurovascular preservation. In terms of uh, survival, it's not so bad, as you can see in this U uh, series coming from the Mayo Clinic with a median follow-up of 10 years. You see that in terms of uh, cancer-specific survival at 15 years, it's 79%. And in terms of uh, PSA progression-free survival, it's 60 seven percent at 15 years but be aware that two-thirds of the patients receive at least hormonal therapy or radiation therapy uh, therapy after surgery so that means we are really in the context of the multimodal approach in terms of surgery we have to go for excellent lymph node dissection we have to go to a large radical prostatectomy no nerve sparing technique in most of the case and of course, with the uh, evaluation of the specimen, we will be able to discuss uh, adjuvant therapy. So why do we have to go for excellent lymph node dissection? Because we know that it can reduce the risk of prostate cancer specific mortality in 23% in, in, in of the case. So it's not so bad. You have to take time to do an excellent lymph node dissection. You have to go for excellent lymph node dissection like what we did when we have to deal with bladder cancer. We, you have to remove, of course, the, uh, the, the obturator area, the area under the uh, obturator nerve. You have to go uh, in this area in the common artery and pass in the opposite side of the ureter to dissect the presacral area. The number of uh, nodes that you have to have on the pathology report when you do this kind of surgery is between 20 and 30, 40 nodes, okay? Very important. And this is an important point for, for, to, to say that you did a good excellent left node dissection. So what do we have in guidelines? So surgery is a reasonable option on selected patients with high risk prostate cancer. It has to be in a multimodal approach. And if we go for surgery, excellent lymph node dissection must be performed because the systemic risk of positive lymph nodes is between 15 and 40% of the case. For this discussion that we had concerning the new adjuvant hormonal therapy, so you see in guideline, it's really, uh, it's really clear. We don't have to offer uh, this kind of strategy to patients before surgery. And, uh, but we have, because we want to, to move on, we want to, to, to change our attitude. There is uh, the Cochrane Library. We did a nice review concerning this point, and they found that if you use hormonal therapy before the surgery, you reduce the risk of positive margin. You reduce the proportion of patients with PT3 disease. You reduce the risk of uh, lymph node, uh, positive lymph nodes, but there is no impact in the literature for now for the survival, PSA progression free survival, cancer specific survival. But in the Cochrane Library, they said that, well, the duration of hormonal therapy is different in the different uh, studies. So there is no recommendation saying that we have to use six months or 10 to 10 months of hormonal therapy before the surgery. It's very variable. And uh, they found that there is, in a certain way, a certain impact of this hormonal therapy in uh, PSA progression with the duration of the hormonal therapy. So if you give hormonal therapy for one month, it's nothing, okay? If you give hormonal therapy for six months, it can have a small impact on, on PSA progression-free survival. And second point, most of these studies were done with just a, a regular agonist or antagonist of LHRH. And now we have this new hormonal therapy. And this new hormonal therapy, as we know, are much more effective 
in terms of efficacy. We saw that, that uh, in carcinogenic resistant prostate cancer, in hormone metastatic prostate cancer. So why not in locally advanced prostate cancer? So there is some data now that we have. Uh, there is a small study. It's the beginning of this story, I, I believe. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, small, a sh short uh, publication concerning 65 patients who were randomized in two groups. First one receiving uh, abiraterone plus LHRH agonist versus just LHRH agonist for three months before surgery. And you see that 85% of the patients were high risk prostate cancer with a glycine core of more than eight. What do we have on the pathology? Look at the tumor volume. Tumor volume regress dramatically. This is a tumor volume with a patient who received only LHRH agonist. So the tumor volume after uh, this uh, three months of hormonal therapy was 2.5 millimeter. And if you use this abiraterone, the tumor volume shrink to 0.4 milliliter in this group of patients. In terms of uh, reduction of uh, pro or proportion of patients who have undetectable P uh, PSA after surgery, it, it was an advantage of using uh, hormonal therapy before, but this is not a, a big deal. But in terms of survival for the moment, we don't have any answer. So we have to wait. We have to wait for a uh, prospective hormonal trial that are, are launched. In this table, there is a, a different uh, uh, publication on this uh, the use of this new hormonal therapy before surgery. I show you the, the first one we're using abiraterone, but there is also other one using as enzalutamide and, uh, and with the same endpoint and same conclusion that means you reduce the risk of positive margin you reduce the risk of positive lymph nodes uh, you reduce the proportion of patients with P uh, pt3 and you reduce dramatically the tumor volume so there is ongoing try as uh, i told you there is one important one that is a protease try uh, in, in which a patient with a locally advanced prostate cancer receives six months of hormonal therapy either lhrh agonist or LH agonist plus apalutomide, then they have surgery, and then they continue again for six months of hormonal therapy. And we will see in terms of, of, uh, um, of metastatic free survival and percentage of pathology complete response, what will be the, the, the answer. I was a little bit afraid when I saw this uh, with study uh, coming, because in terms of, uh, I think it was very, uh, it was very uh, positive to think that uh, we'll have a, a huge proportion of patients with a PT0 disease on the pathological uh, examination. Because I deal with this kind of cancer since a long time, I, and uh, I didn't find any PT0 after hormonal therapy. So we'll see. We'll see the result. Uh, at least we, we have this study in, uh, in Henri Mondo. We did more than 25 patients. We don't have any PT0, but one of my colleagues from, from Ren told me that he, he had one or two cases with a PT0. So we'll see. So at least in terms of tolerance, of course, it's six months of hormonal therapy. So you have to discuss that with your patient. And second point, in terms of surgery, I would say it's easier. It was like a, 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 a false uh, thinking uh, coming from our, our colleague and our, our past chairman saying that when you give hormonal therapy, it's super sticky to remove the prostate. It's a very difficult surgery. No, you have a smaller prostate. There is a, the, the tumor shrink into the prostate or at least there is regression of the, of the tumor volume. So it's really, uh, I, I won't say easy surgery, but it, it's, 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 a, it's like the other, it's no, no problem. So protease is, is the first one. There is eradicates who include, um, include um, a decipher score, that is a score of, of prognosis. So, so they randomize the patient according to this, uh, to this score, and they use uh, darolutamide instead of apalutamide, and we'll see what's going, what will be uh, the future. Again, we have uh, other approach also to, to, to deal with this uh, high-risk prostate cancer, and we have this lutectomy, that is the use of P lutetium PSMA, in patients with high-risk prostate cancer before surgery. So again, it's patients with high-risk prostate cancer, they are treated with lutetium, and then they had surgery. And we'll see in terms of uh, endpoints what will be uh, the, the evolution of the patients. 
So if we continue the story of our patient, he has some question concerning radiation therapy. What is the dose of radiation therapy? Does he need hormonal therapy? All of you know that, of course, uh, there is a lot of consensus concerning the, the dose of hormonal of radiation therapy that we have to give. It's going to be at least uh, 75 degrees gray uh, uh, for, for this patient. And of course, that uh, we know that if we increase the dose of radiation therapy, we increase the toxicity. So this is what we have to discuss with the patient. And usually, after this kind of discussion, the patient say, okay, I'm on surgery. But at least you have to discuss that, the, the side effect of the, of the radiation therapy, because we are in a multimodal approach. So probably at a certain point, you will need radiation therapy. But as you know, the side effect of radiation therapy when you do it after surgery are much lower compared to the side effect of radiation therapy that you have when the prostate is on site. So uh, 74 degree in 37 fraction, this is uh, the most important thing that we have to keep in mind concerning radiation therapy. And in terms of hormonal therapy, you are all aware about the, the work of uh, Michel Bola, Yuvarji uh, from Grenoble, where uh, Gael is also working. Um, and we know that we have to give at least maximum three years of hormonal therapy, but at least two years of hormone therapy for, for this kind of patients. There is also the group of uh, Gustave Roussy uh, who are dealing with this kind of patient by uh, using external beam radiation and brachytherapy. So really you increase the, 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 the radiation therapy in the prostate with a good uh, outcome as you can see, but clearly uh, send patient to a very good team who are used to use this kind of approach uh, by combining two radiation therapy it can be very difficult in terms of, of side effect. Okay, if the patient is not fit for, uh, uh, for surgery, so it is not the case of the patient, but if you have a locally advanced prostate cancer, but the whole patient, do we have to give him immediately hormonal therapy or can we defer hormonal therapy? There is a one important study from Studer a couple of years ago saying that if the patient have a PSA at baseline greater than 50 and the PSA dominant line less than 12 months, if the patient have a good opportunity to start immediately hormonal therapy because it's going to improve his survival. Let's go back to our patient. So he has a surgery. It was a PT3B lesion, N1, lesion 8. And he has one positive uh, note out of the 21 that we removed. At six weeks, his PSA is 0.1. Do you think that this patient need to go for radiation therapy? Do he need radiation therapy and hormonal therapy? Or does he need just hormonal therapy because he has an N1 disease? Yes. No, it was no extra nodal. Uh, uh, capsular penetration, and the focus was uh, two millimeter. This is a very important point that you mentioned because it's very small extension of the disease. I, I, I would uh, leave him without any, nothing, just uh, following with PSA. You follow the, the patient. Who will go directly for adjuvant radiation therapy? One, two, three, four, five, okay. Who goes for radiation therapy and hormonal therapy? Yeah immediately, okay, because he is young, okay. Are you happy with a PSA 0.1 nanogram at six weeks? It's in between, huh? You have the feeling that this patient is not going to stay with a low PSA for a long time. Okay, so what do we have in the literature? Uh, if we use uh, this multimodal approach, surgery and radiation therapy, uh, 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 it can be better in terms of uh, PSA progression-free survival and clinical progression-free survival, especially for patients who have positive margin invasion of the seminal vesicle. And, uh, uh, but in terms of uh, overall survival, you know that there is only one uh, study who look at this issue and if, uh, they found that an improvement in overall survival this is a SWOG study. The two other ones, the ORTC and the ARO study, looking at the same issue, didn't find any impact on adjuvant, immediate adjuvant radiation therapy in terms of overall survival. That means in the uh, recommendation, you can go for immediate or defer salvage radiation therapy, okay? Do we need to give uh, androgen deprivation? The answer is yes. You have a different study looking at this issue and you need to give at least six months 
of hormonal therapy uh, with uh, the, the radiation therapy. Okay, so in guideline, we say that if you have a PT3 lesion, M0, M0, undetectable PSA, you can uh, uh, inform the patient that can have, can have immediate adjuvant radiation therapy or salvage radiation if there is an increase of his PSA. Okay? But the patient have a N1 disease. Okay, no capsular penetration, two millimeter of cancer. Does he need hormonal therapy? Well, most of you said he needs radiation therapy, and this is what we did for his, for, for this patient. Uh, for, for the N1 disease, uh, there is this uh, very important study that all of you know. It's a missing study published a long time ago. It includes patients with, uh, with N1 disease, with two groups, either going for immediate ad, uh, androgen deprivation or just observation. And you see that in terms of overall survival, not in terms of PSA progression or clinical progression, in terms of also overall survival, there is no, as we said in France, no photo. It's really a clear advantage of uh, having uh, immediate androgen deprivation. But it's not exactly the same patient that we had to deal with because in, in this situation, he has, a, he has a excellent left node dissection. He has less than two nodes, two, two positive nodes. So you see that in the guideline concerning your patient, we can go for extended expectant management when we have a patient who undergone extended left node dissection and who had less than two positive nodes with microscopic involvement and a PSA less than 0.1 at six weeks. So this is a possibility. So what I have to say concern, and to conclude concerning this locally advanced prostate cancer, definitely for young patients, it's multimodal approach. If we go for surgery, include external left node dissection and discuss before the surgery the risk of having adjuvant radiation therapy or salvage radiation therapy and the need of hormonal therapy for at least six months combined with radiation therapy. If the patient goes for radiation therapy alone, two to three years of hormonal therapy and high dose of radiation therapy. And if the patient is unfit for surgery or local treatment uh, with radiation therapy, for instance, and you think about hormonal therapy, you go for hormonal therapy if the PSA is greater than 50 nanogram per meter, and if the patient has a PSA dominant less than 12 months. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>